Well, already got a problem. So that is a solid block. Set. I was ready to go and ready to rock tonight and get this done. And uh, yeah, what a waste of time. Why don't you get out there and feed Tina? Why don't you go eat a decroted piece of crap? All right, so I reached out to the vendor, uh, Abitron, and they were really cool. Um, I let them know what was going on and uh, they, I wasn't expecting anything. And uh, they are sending me a whole new batch. So I decided to use what I had here and mix this up. And so I went ahead and uh, poured it in. You can see where it's kind of self-leveling. Well, obviously. And uh, obviously I'm gonna have to do some reshaping and stuff like that, but I expected that. I've got the heater running in here to crank the temperatures up uh, or keep the temperatures stable. It's it's Texas, so where we had 70 degree weather about uh, a week and a half, two weeks ago, now we're down to the 40s. <laughs> so, but that's normal for us. Okay, folks, um, it's very slow going. This is actually several days uh, later after the previous little segment and um, I got my new replacement Abitron. And uh, everything seems to be hunky-dory there and no issues. And uh, I went ahead and built a new uh, dam around the area that's damaged. And um, I would it would be great if I could actually mold it, you know, into what I want, but this the nice thing about this is going to flow into every little part of it. There's not going to be any air pockets, and then once it cures, it's solid. Then I can shape it, and the next part will be to get some of that, um, you know, um, epoxy putty that you get in the tubes, and it, and to um, if I need to, one build the ridge and then shape what I need to, um, and then the other part will be any any issues with. Um, shaping i'll fill it in with some um bondo potentially like the fiberglass based stuff that's uh ten it tends to be significantly better than the regular old bondo um so yeah that's the plan uh we'll just this is again next time you see uh us come back it's gonna be several days so it is what it is appreciate your patience 2,000 years later. And this is where we're at. We got some moldy cheddar cheese that we're dealing with. Um, unfortunately, my tape dam that I built leaked a little bit and some of the epoxy went over the top, but this is all gonna get um, graded off with my, you know, I've, I've heard these called cheese graders. Um, but it's, you know, they're just great. It's a grater and you just hooks off. It takes off a whole lot of material real quick. And, um, but I can't do anything yet. Uh, I need to let it continue to cure for the next few days. It's dry. Let's go. Let's go. All right, guys. So uh, I'm, I've skipped ahead a little bit. Uh, this video is going to end up being rather short because... I don't want to belabor you with me just sanding. Literally, that's all I've been doing. This stuff's pretty hard. And um, uh, it's taken quite a bit of effort to get to this point. Uh, I am just working at it when I have time. So as you can see, I've got quite a bit of work to do. This isn't anywhere near any form of final state, but you can start to see it is taking shape, right? So you can see where it has potential to become what we need it to become. And so that's, that's cool. I have a lot yet to go. So you don't say anyways, um, we'll go ahead and, uh, end this video on this particular cliffhanger. And the next time we come back, 
this will hopefully be pretty much done. Um, if you are disappointed that I'm not showing you the whole thing, I do apologize. You know, I know that some people really just like to watch, um, you know, every minute detail as to what, what's actually happening. So anyways, um, yeah, I think, I think, uh, I think it's probably best if I just focus on, uh, getting this done. So let me tell you what's going to happen. So I'm going to get this roughed out and then I'm going to work on blending this all in. It will require some body filler, not epoxy, um, to get that filled in properly. Uh, I am, if there's anyone who does body work, uh, professionally, uh, feel free to comment below. This is aluminum. That's the fuel tank. For those of you who are not familiar with Buell's, that is hollow. It's very thin aluminum. I think it's, it might be the same gauge as back here. Probably is. I can't see it being any thicker here. These bins do add some rigidity to it. But when this is full of fuel, you know, of course, you got a hot engine here. So there's a temperature differential. And it goes through some pretty rapid changes whenever you fill it up with cold fuel. There's the filler. When you fill it up with cold fuel, obviously, you know, the outer side is going to cool off much faster than, than the inner um, bit of the frame fuel cell, if you want to call it that. So <clears throat> I have to be careful with what I use. My notion is that I'm going to use a minimal amount of uh, fiberglass uh, body filler, Bondo, fiberglass Bondo. Uh, of course, I'm not sponsored if anyone's wondering. Just that's what I call it. There's other brands. So when I get this close to being where it needs to be, I'm going to use um, some body filler to, to get it to that last bit with the potential of getting some of that um, um, self-setting metal epoxy stuff that you see at all the stores. Like uh, I can't remember the brand, but it comes in a tube. And if I need to build this out, this area here to fully match this profile on this side. You can kind of see where that profile has got a nice clean ridge and this needs to match that as close as possible. And you can see it has potential to get there. It's just, there may be a little bit in this area that I need to add, add to. So we'll see what ends up happening. But anyways, if you have any information, if you have working knowledge of what I'm doing here, and you're a pro or you've done this before, let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate that. Um, so I that's really where we're at at this point. Um, I, uh, in terms of getting this job done, uh, this bike done, it's not a job, it's my bike, it's keeping, I'm keeping it. Um, so I'm probably gonna end up, I think I've said this before, but just in case, uh, for the sake of getting my bike in a rideable condition, I'm going to forego getting the wheels powder coated this go round because I can do that at any point. So that'll be one difference uh, with this whole scenario. I'm just going to have um, some new tires put on to clean those up as well as I can. And uh, well, I've got them off, you know, obviously and uh, get that done. And I am going to put the decals, the yellow decals on there somewhere because that's cheap and easy to do. And I've got some other surprises uh, thanks to uh, Mike Lowry. Be sure to check out his channel and his bike. Um, Mike, Mike doesn't really do YouTube. He's got some videos on YouTube. I think his plans are eventually to capture some uh, riding videos of him on his bike. Um, I, for y'all's sake, I wish that Mike would post, Mike, this is kind of me challenging you. I wish he would post more videos of his current build. Um, that bike is pretty outstanding and there's a lot going on and, uh, he's a busy guy. So, you know, we all are, I think, um, but it'd be, <laughs> you guys, I'm telling you, those who like Buell's would love his bike. Um, even if you don't like Buell's you'd love his bike. It's got some amazing stuff happening. Anyways, um, so Mike is hooking me up with some parts that I will showcase in a future video when they arrive. 
and I'm pretty ecstatic about what he has done to contribute to my bike and this channel and what we're doing here. So, all right, that's it. I think, I think we're good. You can see I've got a lot uh, of just trash laid out. It is what it is. I'm just like, you know what? It's going to be filthy anyway. I'm going to leave it be until I'm done with all this body work. Um, so, all right, guys, that's it. Till next time, peace out and keep it between the ditches. Thank you.